Hi there kids, it's me Miss Booksy. We've had so many cool winter adventures here at Cool School. Let's watch them again and tell me your favorite story in the comments below. Hi, I'm Gerda. I grew up in a place called Florida. You know, where everything is always happy and fun and super sunny. <laughs> Siggy! Sorry Gerd, Wally overshot that one. Oops, can't control this thing sometimes. Well, that's all right, guys. Who am I to get in the way of some fun in the sun, eh? <laughs> Just don't forget some sunscreen. As you can tell, I had a lot of friends, but no one made me happier than my most special friend of all. <sighs> Kay. <laughs> we did everything together, like fly kites, and build sandcastles, and make flowers. A rose for you, my lady. And go on awesome vacations to Kay's grandma in Alaska. Alaska, here we come! <laughs> hey Kay, what do Alaskans order at a restaurant? Um, I don't know. Ice burgers? <laughs> Get it? Ice burger? Well, I thought it was funny. Burr! Sure is cold out here. Good thing I packed my winter coat. What? It's not real. So anyway, Kay and I had a really fun trip in Alaska, but I was ready to go back home to sunshine and happiness. <laughs> That's when things got really, really not happy. There we were, sitting with the snowmen and eating ice cream when suddenly, ah, snow bees, huh, the meanest bees ever. Go get your own ice cream. Well, maybe we can give them just a little. Sharing is caring, eh? Oh. Okay, but no more than one lick each. Ow, ow, eat. that hurts, ow. Stop, stop, me no snow bees. Oh, stop right there. But it was too late. The snow bees had already stung Kay like a hundred times. Not to mention finish all his ice cream. We'll not let some snow bees ruin our vacation. Right, Kay? Right? Hmm. Huh. Mm, okay, I guess I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> That's a, that's a funny joke, Kay. <laughs> no, but seriously. I've had enough of your happiness, okay? Leave me alone. But I, I, I don't understand. I thought we were BFFs forever. You gave me a rose. I hate roses. Okay, you're probably just in pain from all those snow bee stings. Not to worry, I know just the trick. <laughs> Nothing like a good reindeer sled ride to get you out of the blues. No, I hate reindeer. I hate sleds. I hate everything. Okay, I get it. It was my fault you got stung, but we were besties. <laughs> Guess I better get going. Sunshine State, here I come. I totally thought Kay would come after me, but he didn't. I was so angry at Alaska, I vowed never to come back again. They're back. Wahoo! Did you get me that snow globe I asked for? Uh-oh. How was I going to tell them what happened? Uh, hi guys. So, funny story. Kay's actually not here. I thought you went with Kay to his grandma. I mean, if you wanted some time away from us, you could have just said so. What happened was we were eating ice cream next to a snowman when a bunch of super mean snow bees totally attacked us and stung Kay like a zillion times. And he got really mad at me for letting him get stung. So he ordered me to leave him alone in Alaska. I can't believe I totally ruined everything. That boy is always happy and kind. Not to mention, he's got stars in his eyes whenever he sees you. Are you sure that was what happened? Yes, I'm sure, except... Except what? Except those snow bees sure look strange. They were all blue and icy and mean. Maybe they transferred their meanness. So that's what made Kay not so happy. Oh my, poor Kay. I'll get to the bottom of this. If it's the last thing I do. Yeah, yeah, I know I said I'd never go back, but this was for Kay. Hit it, back to Alaska. I was determined to find Kay and bring back his happiness. Oh, we got this, guys. Uh, just a little farther. There. Hold up. That's where we had our ice cream, just beside that snowman. Kay? Kay? It looks like we're too late. Hmm. If only the snowman could talk. I bet he'd know where Kay went. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. What's that, Mr. Snow? 
Mmm. 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 Suddenly, I had an idea. Ah, <sighs> finally, something other than that carrot nose. You know, I can't even smell out of that thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, please, Mr. Snow, can you tell me if you've seen a dude, yay high, leave from this spot? Why, yes. Yes, I did. What a brave young man, headed right down to the River of Doom. River of Doom? Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Did I say doom? I mean flume. Like where kids go on log flume rides in the summer. It's right over there. Phew. <laughs> so there was still hope I could catch up with Kay at the river. If only I could get through all this snow. Don't move, Kay. On my way. Oh, this must be it. Kay? Okay. Are you there? Can you hear me? I sure can. Would you keep it down? Sorry. Um, did you happen to see a guy, yay hi, come through here? Sure. I saw him. You did? Oh, great. Do you know where he went? He was standing right by the frozen ice water. Could have left. Could have fallen in. Fallen in? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Relax, girl. I need a quick rinse anyway. Nope. All clear. Guess he left. Oh, thank goodness. Do you have any idea where he may have gone? There's a rose garden not too far off. Kind of nice if you like roses. That's it. Kay loves roses. I was positive I'd find him there, and we could finally leave this cold, scary place. Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay? Suddenly, I heard a voice. Who goes there? Uh, Kay? Is that you? No, it's me. But I still didn't see anyone. Me? Me who? Me, the tree. Hello. Ah, you can talk. I can even bark. <laughs> Get it? A little tree humor. I was just looking for my friend Kay. Yay, hi. Pretty cute if you ask me. Have you seen him? I have not, but... But? The scarecrow would know. Hey, Scary, did you see any guys come through here? Totally. He was heading towards the evil Snow Queen's palace. Shame. Seemed like a nice dude. The evil Snow Queen? Yeah, coldest lady in all of Alaska. <laughs> Feel that chill? That's her, all right. Well, she is not going to lay one icy finger on my friend. Sorry to interrupt. We were just looking for a young girl wearing a blue dress. Usually travels with a small pup named Toto. Hey, you look awfully familiar. Have we met? Uh, I don't believe so. I've got one of those faces, I guess. <laughs> Now, if you don't mind, we were just finishing up a conversation. How about a yellow brick road? Have you seen one of those? I'm gonna let you guys hash this out. Scary, if you could just tell me which way to the palace, I'll be on my way. Straight ahead, lady. But be careful. Real dark and scary in those parts. Well, nothing's gonna stop me. I'm coming for you, Kay. Oh, and bye, guys. Good luck finding that blue dress girl and brick road. Gerda marched through the icy forest on her search for Kay. Then she remembered a safety rule her scout leader had taught her. When in doubt, shout. <laughs> Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay? Who are you? Who are you? I was taking a nap and you woke me up. So I'll ask the questions. Who are you? I'm Gerda P. Hobsworth, Girl Scout Ambassador and President of my school's Botany Club. Very impressive. I'm Lady Shannon Von Sol, Sorceress of Eternal Summer. It doesn't look or feel like Eternal Summer around here. Oh, well, not here, obviously. Come see. Sorry about all that shouting. I'm looking for my friend Kay. Word on the street is he went towards the Snow Queen's palace. Oh, she's a brat. Maybe even evil. Here we are. Still not getting any summer vibes. <laughs> Oh, awesome! It's like paradise in here. It looks just like Florida. That's where I'm from. <laughs> it's always like summer there. Wonderful. Then you'll feel right at home here. Well, I can't stay. I have to go find Kay. But maybe we'll stop by on our way home? Oh, just stay for a bit. I have popsicles. Hmm, I love popsicles, but no thank you. I really have to go. Suit yourself. Oh, okay, so how do I get out? Gerda looked around but couldn't see the door anywhere. She hadn't been there long. How could she have already gotten lost? 
Everywhere I look, there's just more palm trees. They're everywhere. Oh, where did that sorceress lady go? Owie, oh, darn coconut. Oh, oh, actually, now that I'm sitting, I realize I'm pretty tired. Ooh, uh, you know, I think I'll just take sleep a little and just, uh, then I'll go find Kay. Gerda drifted off to sleep and found herself in a crazy dream. She had found Kay, except he was different. He was a prince. Wow, hey Kay. But Kay ignored her. Kay, I came to rescue you. Suddenly, a beautiful woman appeared. She was dressed head to toe in white silk and sparkly crystals. Wow, you're really shiny. <laughs> she bent to give Gerda a kiss on the top of her head. Wow, just like my grandma does. But when the woman in white kissed her, Gerda's hair turned to ice. Okay, not like my grandma. Then Gerda realized she was becoming completely frozen. Kay, help! But Kay looked on as if he didn't even hear her. Kay! <gasps> Scary, I hope Kay hasn't become frozen. Okay, I had my nap. Now I gotta go. But Gerda realized she still didn't know the way out of eternal summer. Where is Lady Shannon Von Soul? Hello? Hello, lady. It's like she tried to trap me in here. Wait a second. Doesn't sorceress really just mean witch? Oh no, she's a witch. Not necessarily. Oh? Sorcery is just magic. So technically there could be a nice sorceress. Oh, okay. But she isn't. Lady Shannon Von Sol isn't nice? She won't let me leave. I'm a prisoner. At night, I sleep in a cage. Well, it's really cold outside. I don't think a toucan can survive out there. I bet a toucan can too survive out there. Just wait till she puts you in a cage. Why would she want to put me in a cage? She's obsessed with summer and sunshine. You're from Florida, so you're like the most summery, sunshiny creature she's ever seen. Trust me, you gotta get out of here. Okay, well, how about this? You show me the door, and I'll smuggle you out with me. Deal! So Gerda followed the toucan through the eternal summer paradise, past all the palm trees and coconuts. Here it is! Let's bust out! Do you have a coat? Do I have a coat? I'm a bird! What do you think? So sassy. Oh, I have an idea. Fly in here. <laughs> and where do you think you're going? I said, where do you think you're going? I'm just gonna find my friend Kay. Kay? <laughs> but it's much too cold out here. Come back inside. Don't listen to her. Excuse me? I didn't say anything. Psst. Let me out. Okay, I definitely heard something that time. Now! Run! Gerda ran and ran and ran and ran and ran, but the thing about Alaska is... Ice! Oh, oh owie! You're pretty clumsy, huh? Well, I'm not used to all this ice and snow. Brr, neither am I. It's freezing out here. I know, but I have to save my friend Kay. He was taken by the Snow Queen. Oof, she's the evilest queen ever. Yeah. I heard she's mega scary. Oh, poor Kay. See, doesn't he look nice? He's probably so cold and afraid. Hey, what's the big idea? Stop it. Are you trying to tell me something? Can you speak? Un poquito. Hmm, is that Spanish? Took a little bit of Spanish in school. Hola, mi nombre es Gerda. Hola, Erda. Mi nombre es Pete. <laughs> nice to meet you, Pete. Unfortunately, I don't know more Spanish than that. Do you two can? No, but I speak fluent bird. Oh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> <laughs> Pete here tells me there's a princess who lives nearby who just married a prince. Sounds nice, but I'm not really in the mood for a love story right now. He says the prince looks just like your friend Kay. Really? Married? Kay? Kay? And he's a prince? Whoa, just like my dream. We have to go to that palace right now. He says it's one mile as the raven flies, but on foot, it'll take about 24 hours. A whole day? Well, we better get going then. Pete has an interesting idea. Huh? Ready for liftoff? 
Oh, um, is this safe? We're birds. We do this all the time. Relax. Gerda tried to relax, which was hard because, you know, she was being carried over a snowy mountain by a bunch of birds. <laughs> but once she was brave enough to open her eyes, she saw that it was really quite beautiful. Wow. <laughs> right? We birds got a pretty decent view. There it is. I see the palace. Oh, I really hope Kay's in there. <sighs> Oh, gracias, Pete. Other birds, thank you all. I'm forever indebted to you. Well, here goes nothing. Much better in here. Nice and toasty. Hello. Kay, princess, hello. I'm the princess. Who are you? I'm Gerda P. Hopsworth. <laughs> I'm looking for my friend. I think you may have married him. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. He'll be so happy to see you. Come, sit by the fire and warm up. Where is he? Darling, come down. There are some friends here to see you. Kay, is that you? Kay, is that you? My name is Kevin, but I suppose you could call me Kay. Oh, he's not Kay. I'm sorry, dear. Not as sorry as I am. Are you all right? Gerda was not all right, and she told the prince and princess all about it. I lost my friend. Kay? Yes, Kay, and I think the Snow Queen has him. Oh, she's bad news. I know, that's what everyone says. And then I heard that someone who looked just like my Kay had come here and married the beautiful princess. But you're not Kay at all. Oh, I should have never come to Alaska. <laughs> Alaska? You're not in Alaska. I'm not? No, Alaska is far, far away from here. This village is called Schnee. Schnee? Great, so now I'm lost too. Just add that to the list. I'm cold, I'm hungry, I'm sad, I'm scared, and I'm lost. <laughs> Maybe we can help. The prince and princess invited Gerda to spend the night. And I don't know if you've ever spent a night in a palace, but it was pretty nice. There was delicious food. <laughs> Big warm beds near cozy warm fireplaces. And in the morning, the prince and princess gave Gerda her very own golden carriage and a beautiful white horse. They gave the toucan a warm vest and a tiny fur cap. And for their journey, plenty of food, lanterns, and a compass. The Snow Queen's palace is in a place called Glacier in the north. Do you know how to use a compass? Allow me. I'm a bird with excellent navigational skills. North is that way. That's south. Wishful thinking, I guess. Good luck. Thanks for everything, your highnesses. Goodbye. Goodbye. Gerda and the toucan set off for the north, feeling quite luxurious in their golden carriage. The only bad thing about a golden carriage is it's a little flashy and has the potential to attract robbers. What a nice carriage you have. Um, thank you. We'll just be taking it and everything else you've got, princess. Oh, I'm not a princess. Hush up and hop out. Leave her alone. <coughs> ah, I want to keep the girl. See what now? Absolutely not. Don't mind her. I'm the real boss around here. You can be my new best friend. It gets lonely out here living a life of crime. Gerda didn't see how she had much of a choice. These people had swords, after all. And the little one was a biter. Aw, cute bird. I'll keep him, too. Great. Giddy up, horsey. So now Gerda and the toucan were off on a new and totally unexpected leg of their journey, this time to live with the band of robbers deep in the snowy woods of Schnee, wherever that was. This is it. Home sweet home. It's nice. <laughs> Thanks. We have quite the collection. Check it out. I even have a pet reindeer. You should let him out so he can get some fresh air and exercise. Are you nuts? He'll run away. You look naughty too. I'll go find a cage for you. We gotta get out of here. Maybe it's not so bad. Easy for you to say. It's like the sorceress's place all over again. What are you two whispering about? Nothing. Nothing. Good. In your cage. Okay, new best friend, let's play a game. What game? Sword fight. 
The little robber girl had just challenged Gerda to a sword fight. Sword fight? A play sword fight. But you actually have a sword. That makes it pretty real in my book. Fine, we won't play. It's time for dinner anyway. Come and get it, everybody. Come and get your slop. Mmm, looks delicious. You must give me the recipe. Oh, it's not for you. There are pellets in your cage. Pellets, yum. Probably better than slop. Eat up, girl. You know, I'm really not hungry. Maybe I should get going. We, we should get going. Oh, no, you don't. You're my new best friend. You stay here with me. But I have to rescue my friend, Kay. It's very important. Kay will be fine. Forget Kay. Sit. Eat. Later, after their dinner of slop, the robber girl showed Gerda her room. Wow, you have a lot of birds. I love birds. That's why I was so excited to find you and your parrot. Toucan. Whatever. I don't want to. Fine. Why do they all have little strings tied to their legs? Because I don't want them to fly away, obviously. But why do you trap your creatures and make them stay? I told you, I get very lonely out here. These are the only friends I ever had until you came along. Now, let's go to sleep. You sleep with your sword? Always. Gerda lay down near the robber girl, making sure that she was far enough away from her sharp sword, of course. The girl went to sleep immediately, but Gerda couldn't sleep. She was too worried about Kay. How would she ever rescue him if she was also trapped? Hey, girl. Me? Yeah, you. I saw your body, Kay. You did? When? Shh. A few days ago. I just got tied up here yesterday. Where is he? He was with the Snow Queen at her palace. How do you know it was him? I heard the Snow Queen call him by name. Did she seem very mean? Oh, yes. She's very wicked. Poor Kay. Oh, I miss him so much. I just want to find him and save him. He was my best friend in the whole world. Be quiet. You wake the girl. But the robber girl was not sleeping at all. She had heard everything. She wanted a friend more than anything in the world, but she knew she couldn't keep Gerda from Kay. She had to help. The next morning, very early, so early the sun wasn't even awake, the robber girl woke Gerda. Hey! What time is it? Time to get you to your friends, Kay. Huh? Come on! You're letting us go? I want to be your friend and I want you to stay here forever, but for some reason I want to help you. Weird, right? Not weird at all. That's what a real friend would do. Really? Yes. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Now you be careful. Don't run too fast and drop my friend. Giddy up. The reindeer didn't have to be told twice. He took off for Glacier, prancing and leaping with joy. Woohoo! Let's go get Kay. Wait for me! Gerda, Toucan, and the reindeer had traveled all day through snow and ice and still no sign of Glacier. We've been walking forever. Doesn't this thing go any faster? Why don't you fly? <laughs> My wings got tired. Hey, reindeer, can you talk? Hello? Hmm? Oh, yes. But my name isn't Reindeer, it's Clyde. Oh, hi Clyde. Pleased to be officially introduced. <laughs> Clyde, are you sure we're going the right way? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, at least I think I'm sure. You think you're sure? He spent the last couple years in captivity. Give him a break, Toucan. Why don't you fly up and check out the bird's eye view? Great idea, Clyde. Toucan, can you do that? I liked it better when you didn't talk. So, Clyde, tell me about Glacier. Oh, it's the most beautiful place in the world. Have you been to Florida, though? I think that's the most beautiful place. Not really my scene, but I have some cousins who go there every year for Christmas. Christmas. Wait a second. Do you know Santa's reindeer? Yeah, Donner and Blitzen and I go way back. Oh, <laughs> so can you fly or what? Good question. I never tried. What? I know for a fact that humans can't fly, and that didn't stop me from trying. I'm fly! Ow. 
That's how I broke my arm. See, you can still see the scar. <laughs> wow. I know. So anyways, you should totally try to fly. Okay, maybe you should hop off first. Good thinking. <laughs> okay, just run really fast and then leap. Sorry, totally my bad on that one. What happened here? I tried to fly. Oh boy, stick to what you know, Clyde. I think maybe Santa's reindeer eats some magic oats or something like that. <laughs> or maybe it's like Peter Pan and you gotta think happy thoughts. Or maybe you just gotta believe in yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, you see anything up there, Toucan? Yeah, I saw a palace just outside the forest. That way. Great, let's go, gang. When Gerda and her friends stepped out of the woods, they stopped, stunned. The palace was huge and sparkly, as if it were covered in a million diamonds. Trees were covered in shimmering icicles, and ice sculptures of animals dotted the land for as far as the eye could see. These are amazing. They look so real. Told you this place was pretty. It is, but we have work to do, people. Or, er, uh, animals. <laughs> Let's go find Kay. Kay? Hello? Are you there, Kay? Kay! And suddenly, there he was in the distance, Kay in the flesh. Kay, it's really you. Hey, what is he doing? Kay, it's me, Gerda, your best friend. Stop it. Why is your friend trying to shoot us with frozen arrows? Yeah, that's not very friendly. Guys, that's not Kay. I mean, it is, but he's not himself. He must be under the Snow Queen's spell or something. We have to save him. Wait, I think I might know how to break the spell. You do? There's an old story about the Snow Queen that I heard as a youngster. Yeah? And I don't know if it's true or just one of those myths. Yeah? But legend has it, that to break the Snow Queen's spell over someone... Spit it out, Clyde! You have to give them a kiss. A kiss? No way! Not you, Toucan. Gerda. Oh, right. Okay, problem. Kay is, um, trying to shoot me with arrows, so how would I get close enough to even give him a kiss? I think we'll just have to run as fast as we can and dodge the arrows. We? Gerda helped both of us to freedom. We owe her. Yeah, you're right. We got you, Gerda. Thanks. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Hello. Snow Queen. That's right, kids. The Snow Queen. The Snow Queen was beautiful. In fact, she looked just like Gerda had dreamed, shimmering from head to toe. She certainly didn't look evil. You're the most sparkly lady I ever saw. Thank you. May I give you a little kiss? The Snow Queen leaned in and was just about to give Toucan a little peck on the head when Gerda remembered her dream. No, Toucan, that's how she freezes you. Oh, did I do that? Silly me. <gasps> Wait, are all these ice sculptures real animals? Of course. Aren't they lovely? You are evil and I know you took my friend Kay, but we're here to save him. Save him? But Kay loves it here. Impossible. You're an evil queen, and you brainwashed him. I'll show you. Kay, come here. Yes, my queen. Kay, would you tell this girl that you're happy here? Kay, no. You like the beach and the sun and hanging out with me. Don't you remember? I'm very happy here. See, he's the snow prince. And you can be the snow princess if you like. No way. Then you can be my prisoner! Hey! Gerda! You want some too, reindeer? It's Clyde! Come on, Snow Prince! Let's go! Well, I guess being free for a day was pretty cool. Don't talk like that, Clyde! We're gonna bust out! You'll be free again, we'll save the toucan, and I'll rescue Kay, you'll see! But how, Gerda? Did I mention I was a Girl Scout? I don't even know what that means. It means that I can save us. Oh, cool. Wait, I don't get it. What does that do? Conjure up some kind of magic? Pretty much. Fire melts ice. It's 
kind of like magic. Let's go. Safety first. Gerda and Clyde found Kay alone, shivering and looking miserable. He was almost blue from the cold. Kay? Do the kiss thing. Don't rush me. This is a big step in our relationship. How's my breath? <gasps> You're just saving his life, remember? Not getting married. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gerda? Kay! Oh, you're back! What happened? You were captured by the evil Snow Queen. She froze your heart, but I saved you. Really? How? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> you got a little something on your face there. Yoo-hoo! Snow Prince! Where are you? Ah, Snow Queen! Let's go! Wait, we gotta get Toucan! What happened? You got frozen! But don't worry, we're going home. Florida, baby! Woohoo! Wait, did you save me with a kiss, too? Don't worry about it. Ooh! K and Gerda sitting in a tree! K I S S I N G! Hush up, Toucan! We gotta go save the rest of these animals. Thank you. Thank you. Now we can go! Guys, hop on! One, two, three, blast off! Whoa! You're doing it, Clyde! You're flying! How about that? I am! I knew you could! Good timing, by the way. Snow Prince, where are you going? Get back here! No way! Yeah, see you never! Kay and Gerda were so happy to be home again, back in warm, sunny Florida, far, far away from the frozen land of the evil Snow Queen. Clyde stayed for a quick visit, swam in the ocean, had some ice cream, but he got homesick and returned to the north. Toucan, on the other hand, was right at home. So, what do you guys want to do next? Build a sandcastle? Go to Disney World? Go windsurfing? Maybe some alligator wrestling? Ebenezer Scrooge owned a factory that made toys, which should be awesome, right? Who doesn't love toys? But it wasn't awesome at all because Mr. Scrooge was very mean to his workers. He made them work too much and paid them too little. He wouldn't even let them take any toys home to their children. Not even this kind of broken one. My son Tim would love to have a toy of his own. No way. I'll sell it for parts. Get back to work, Cratchit. The workers didn't even get to take off on their birthdays. Keep working! The only holiday they got was Christmas Day. And that's where our story begins, kids. The day before Christmas, Ebenezer was at home alone, counting his money. Three million and one, three million two, million... What? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Now where was I? Three million and three. Three million and four. Hello. We're collecting money for a Christmas dinner for the poor. Tell them to eat their lunch more slowly and make it last. Three million and four. Three million and... This time, it was Ebenezer Scrooge's nephew, Fred. Fred invited him to a family party, but Scrooge said he couldn't go. Sorry, Fred. I don't like people! And besides, I won't be finished counting my money by then! Okay, well, Merry Christmas! Bah humbug! I wish everyone would just leave me alone! See, I told you he was mean. <laughs> Later that night, Scrooge was fast asleep. Suddenly, there was a knock on his door. If you're here to tell me Merry Christmas, I'm gonna call the police! Oh! A ghost! Boo! Oh. oh, sorry. That's my ghost hood. I made it myself. I mean, hello, Mr. Scrooge! I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Now let's take a walk. No thanks! Oh. Well, that wasn't very nice. Oh, I mean, uh, sure. Whatever you say, ghost! The ghost of Christmas past and Scrooge traveled back in time. They were inside a house and saw a happy little kid. Who's that brat? And why does he look so happy? He doesn't even have any toys. That's you. You were happy then. This was your favorite time of year. I think you especially loved singing carols. 
Don't you remember? Nope. Well, do you remember this? <coughs> Scruffles. Oh, that's my dog Scruffles. Oh, he was my best friend. I got him for Christmas that year, even though my parents were allergic. <laughs> Me and old Scruffs used to do everything together. Okay, I get it. I'm supposed to learn a lesson, right? Well, it ain't gonna work. A humbug. Oh, you're not done yet. And poof, the ghost disappeared and Scrooge was back at home. He started to go to bed when there was another knock on his door. Ah, sheesh, who are you supposed to be? Oh. Hello, Mr. Scrooge. I'm the ghost of Christmas present. Presents? You got presents for me? Great, what is it? No, no, I mean present as in now. Not the past, not the future, the present. Well, why didn't you just say that? The Ghost of Christmas Now took Scrooge to a very small house. It belonged to his assistant, Bob Cratchit. It looked like Christmas Day, but there was very little food on the table and no presents under their little tree. Yet, everyone looked happy. Tiny Tim hugged his dad and said, It's okay we don't have any presents this year, Papa. I'm just glad we get to spend the whole day with you. Wait, let's zoom in on that. Is that a tiny tear? Looks like Ebenezer Scrooge might have a heart after all. Are you crying? No, I think it's raining. No, it isn't. Whatever, let's go. One more stop. This time, the ghost of Christmas Now took Scrooge to his nephew Fred's house. The whole Scrooge family was there. Fred clinked his fork on a glass and made a toast. Mmm, toast with jelly, maybe a little butter. That's how I like my toast, you know. No, not a piece of bread toast. This kind of toast. To family, the most important thing in the world. To, to family. family. If only Uncle Ebenezer were here, I wish he knew how much we love and miss him. What? Love me? Seriously? For real? Hey, I'm right here, guys. You know they can't hear you, right? Oh, uh, I, I, I'm sure they're just Joking, anyway. Okay, that's it for the present. Goodbye. And suddenly, Scrooge was back at home. But before he could climb back into bed, there was, you guessed it, another knock on the door. Sup, I'm the ghost of Christmas future. Hop into my time machine. That looks like a regular horse and buggy. These horses are really fast. Hold on. They hopped onto the horse and buggy, and the ghost of Christmas future took Scrooge forward 20 years. Scrooge saw a very old man who was all alone and awfully miserable. Who's that? That's you. Me? Why do I look so sad? Oh, am I not still rich? You're lonely. You finally got your wish that everyone would just leave you alone. What's that I'm saying? Uh, Shh. Listen. It was Christmas morning and Ebenezer Scrooge knew what he had to do. He jumped out of bed and filled his pockets with money. He ran to his toy factory and filled a giant sack with toys. Then he walked through the town, giving money and toys to everyone he saw. Scrooge stopped at Bob Cratchit's house. Merry Christmas, Bob. I, I have your holiday bonus and gifts for all your children. This puppy right here is for Tim. Wow, I don't believe it. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. I named him Scruffles Jr., but you can name him whatever you like. No, Scruffles is perfect. This is the best Christmas ever. Ebenezer Scrooge thought so too, but he still had one more stop. He went to Fred's house and joined the family party. <laughs> they sang carols, ate cookies, and Ebenezer even gave a special toast. To family. To, to family. family. Mr. Scrooge had learned a very important lesson. And from that day on, he tried his best to be generous and kind. He even stopped saying bah humbug. Bah ha ha ha, Merry Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Sorry! The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap.
When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. When what to my wondering eyes should appear, but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick. I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys, in St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my hand and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur, from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and he filled all the stockings that turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy ho, Christmas ho, ho. to all and to all a good night. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendis and his mighty penultimate. Get ready for a cool episode, cause today Drew saves winter and comes face to face with Jimmy Freeze. Haha, <laughs> ice camera action. Now kids, Jimmy loves to eat ice cream. See how many ice cream cones you can find in today's episode. Comment below to let us know how many you found. It was winter time at Cool School, and Drew and his buddies couldn't wait to go ice skating. Woohoo! Skating's my favorite part of winter. Totally keeping up my no fall record this year. No chance! Don't you remember you fell like 20 times last year? Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm okay. Um, there was something wrong with that ice. Nope, it was 24 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface of the ice. Perfect skating conditions. Okay, okay. Let's just move on, guys. Here, hop in. This will help us get through all the snow out there so we get to the rink faster. Drew and his buddies hopped inside the snowplow and bolted outside. Past the green grass and the flowers and the sunshine and... Wait a sec. Green grass and flowers and sunshine? Where's all the snow and the cold weather? Yeah, I thought it was supposed to be winter out here. Uh, guys, do you see what I see? Oh no, the ice is totally melted. There's no way we can skate like this. No, no, no! Hot weather in winter? This doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna figure out what's going on here. Drew sketched the hot air balloon. Then he soared way up in the sky, all the way up to the sunny shiner. You know, control of the sun. Hey, Sunny, long time no see. Whoa, we got a good tan. Comes free with the job, kind of like this awesome chair. Pretty cool, huh? How you been, kid? Hot, really hot. Have you been making the sun shine extra strong so we can't have winter at cool school? You gotta go talk to Jack Frost. You know, he's in charge of winter. Didn't realize you two knew each other. Sure, Jack and I went to summer camp together. We never got along too well. My family was in the sunshine business, and uh, you know, he kind of wasn't. So uh, the other kids liked me better. Weather politics, ugh. All right, well, I better go find Jack. Thanks, Sonny. Drew took off again in his super cool hot air balloon and headed straight for the mountaintops where he found Jack Frost, just the person I was looking for. Oh, hey, Drew. What brings you way out here? Well, you see, it's supposed to be winter at cool school, but it's hot outside, and that means we can't go ice skating. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, Drew. I've been out sick with a cold. Oh, man, colds are the worst. Thanks, Drew, but I don't think chicken soup's gonna cut it. I need some time off. But who's gonna be in charge of making it winter outside? 
Hate to say it, but my evil twin Jimmy Freeze is the only other guy I know that's good at freezing stuff. Maybe he can help out. Hmm, I've never worked with a villain before, but if it's the only way to save winter... With no time to spare, Drew sketched a pair of lightning fast skis. And then he zoomed down the side of the mountain, faster and further and faster until... Corner of Evil Crossing and Wicked Way. I guess this is it. Uh-oh. Drew was about to walk right up to one of the biggest villains ever. At the end of part one, Drew had just arrived at Jimmy Freeze's house. Let's see what happens next. Well, well, well. If it isn't little Mr. Pendus. Last I saw you, you strapped me to a slingshot. You know, I landed on a polar bear in Antarctica. That was not cool. Oh uh, yeah, sorry about that. I was just trying to stop you from being super mean. It's my job to be mean. So what brings you out here? Didn't your mom ever tell you not to visit supervillains? Well, it's kind of an emergency. You see, your twin Jack Frost is out sick. Winter is totally missing at cool school, and that means he can't go ice skating. Boo hoo. Poor little cool school. Not. I don't have time for this. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Well, that didn't go as planned. I should've known villains don't help superheroes. Huh? Who goes there? It's me, Krabby Carol. Do you know how crabby it makes me when kids trespass on my property? But it's not my fault. I slid down Jim and Freeze's ice slide and landed up here. What are you doing here? I live here. All the cool villains do. Don't you know anything? Cool villains, huh? Well, none of that will help me bring back Winter to Cool School. Help you? What? We're villains. We don't work unless we can do something real mean to make kids like you not happy. Wait a sec. That's it. I'll bet if I trick Jimmy Freeze into thinking he's being evil, he'll come out here and use his freezing powers in no time. Oh no, I didn't help you by accident, did I? Because that would make me extra crabby. Sorry, Crabby Carol. Gotta go. Oh, uh, here. Thought you might like these. Thanks for your help. Crabs? Why does everybody think I like crabs? Yuck. Hey, guys. Drew whipped out his penultimate and sketched a giant, super duper awesome water slide. A water slide? But it's winter time. Yeah, we want to go ice skating. Shh, just go with me on this. Pretend you're having a blast. Trust me. Whoa, how fun is this? Woohoo! this is so much fun. Glad it's not winter time out here. Hey, Drew, how are we doing? Great, it's only a matter of time before. Having fun in the sun, are we kids? <laughs> Aha! Right on schedule. Jimmy, freeze! What are you doing here? Well, I saw you kids were just a little too happy, so I brought some mayhem. <laughs> Jimmy Freeze started using his freezing powers to make it super cold. No way! It's winter again! You bet it is, thanks to me. Yep, thanks, Jimmy. Never would have gotten winter back without you. Wait, wait, wait. Don't tell me this was a plan to trick me into bringing back winter. Sure was. You villains don't make anything easy, do you? Just you wait, Drew Pendus. I'll be back and badder than ever. <laughs> Woohoo! Never thought I'd be so glad to be cold. Best plan ever, Drew. Totally out villains the villain. Well, you know what this means. Time for ice skating. Well, kids, Drew saved the day after all. It was winter again at cool school, and ice skating was back in action. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm okay. Moral of the story, kids. When winter goes missing, find a supervillain with ice powers. Oh, and remember to grab your buddies and go ice skating. It's the best part of winter. Now wait up. It's time for a brand new adventure of Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. In today's adventure, Drew must save the fall. It was a crisp November day, perfect for drinking warm apple cider and jumping in piles of leaves, when suddenly the sky grew dark and it started to snow. Hey, it's not supposed to snow yet. It's only November. I'm obviously trying to play outside here. Suddenly, it became a blizzard. Brr. Now have you gone too far, Winter. I want fall. Drew knew what must be done. First, I'm going to need an awesome looking snowsuit and something to melt snow, like lightning. Yeah, I designed these goggles to shoot lightning bolts. Cool. Now I'll just add a rocket fuel snowboard that can fly and boom. Winter, say hello to 
Super Drew! Super Drew melted the snow with his white hot lightning, but more snow kept falling faster and colder. He couldn't melt the snow fast enough. That's it, here I come. Drew flew straight up into the sky like a rocket. Brrr. Too cold, ow, 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 ow. Drew flew over the snow clouds to the tip top of the highest mountain. He spotted the culprit, it was Jack Frost. Aha! I've caught you white-handed, Jack. What's with all the snow? It's only November and it's a Saturday, which means I don't even get a snow day. It's not me. I'm trying to stop it. Then who's doing this? I am. <laughs> Drew was confused. This guy looked exactly like Jack Frost, except he had a funny little beard and he wore a black leather jacket. My evil twin brother. That's right, kids. It was Jimmy Freeze, Jack Frost's evil twin from another dimension. He looked like Jack, but instead of nipping at your nose and leaving pretty little ice crystals on your window, he did mean things. Yeah, I'm the guy who makes the playground all icy, so you can't go out for recess. <laughs> One time, he even knocked over a kid's snowman for no reason. <laughs> yup, that was me, and now I'm going to make it snow forever. <laughs> No, you're not! Drew sketched a ginormous snowblower to send Jimmy's snow backwards into space, but Jimmy shot Drew's snowblower with ice! Freeze! <laughs> he was frozen solid, kids, like a popsicle! Sorry, what was that? I can't hear you! But wait, look! Drew was melting the ice from inside with his lightning goggles! But Jimmy Freeze didn't notice because he was too busy being a meanie! It isn't nice to laugh at people, Jimmy Freeze! Huh? I can't believe you're my brother. Jack Frost helped him throw Jimmy into the sling, and they catapulted him into space! See you never, Jimmy! Stupendous Trupendous and his mighty penultimate saved the day, kids! With a little help from his friend, Jack Frost. See you in December, Drew! Perfect! And remember, I love it when it snows on school days. And make sure the snow is good for packing, not too powdery. You got us! Back in Drew's backyard, the snow had all melted. Drew celebrated by jumping around in a big pile of leaves. It was an awesome fall day. And the moral of the story, kids, don't be mean and never knock over a little kid's snowman. And be glad you don't have an evil twin. I'm sure glad I don't. Or do I? It's time for a brand new adventure of Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. In today's adventure, Drew must save Christmas. It was Christmas Eve. Everything was perfect. Stockings were hung by the fire. Snow was falling. Hot cocoa was being sipped. And the best part was Drew had created a Santa detector. As soon as Santa takes off from the North Pole, I'll get a signal. Then I'll track him. I'll know the moment he comes down our chimney. I'm finally going to meet Santa. Drew waited and waited and waited. Finally, there it was. Santa's sleigh was in flight. Woohoo, it's story time. But then it stopped. Oh no. Then Drew's tracker lost the sleigh signal completely. Santa was gone. This isn't good. I gotta find out what's going on. I'm going to the North Pole. Hot dog, you're coming with me. Away we go. Let's save Christmas. Drew and Hot Dog, the reindeer pup, flew to the North Pole. Drew found the spot where he last detected Santa's sleigh. This just looks like a scary cave. Where's Santa? <coughs> what is it, Hot Dog? You know where Santa is? <coughs> Let's go. They flew past some candy cane trees and over Eggnog Lake. And there it was. Whoa, Santa's toy shop. Cool. Drew and Hot Dog went inside. Something was wrong. There were Santa's elves all crying their eyes out. Hey guys, what happened? A very bad elf kidnapped all the reindeer and tied up Santa. <laughs> we wanted to save him, but we're too short to reach. And the tag said don't open till Christmas Day. Well, I'm the stupendous stupendous, and I'm here to save Christmas. Oh, ho, ho, ho. thanks, Drew. No problem, Santa. I'm a huge fan. But we gotta get you out there delivering toys. It's late. But I'm useless without my reindeer. You can use mine. Hot Dog is pretty fast. He's cute, but I need at least eight. How about robot reindeer? I'm kind of scared of robots. Got anything else? Drew didn't expect Santa to be so picky. 
Then he had the perfect idea. He sketched a rocket engine to Santa's sleigh. Santa, you take this and start delivering toys. I'll go find reindeer and meet up with you, okay? Okay, but I've never flown a rocket before. <laughs> I think I'm getting the hang of it. Okay, now let's find these reindeer. The elves told him about a cave where the evil elf hid out, doing things an elf should never do, like breaking toys and making a mess. Okay, evil elf, come up with your hands up. Nothing happened. Drew was going to have to go into the dark cave. He needed a light, a flashlight, or maybe even a... Uh, Rudolph nose! Even better! With his shiny red nose, Drew entered the cave. Then he saw Santa's reindeer, all tied up! There was Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donna, and Blitzen! Drew was just about to get them out when he was pelted with a gumdrop! And then another one! And another one! <laughs> Joke's on you, evil elf! I love gumdrops! Well, do you love presents? Because you're not gonna get any this year. Santa's all tied up. <laughs> Actually, he's flying around in a rocket delivering toys as we speak. What? So I'll just take these reindeers and get going. Not so fast. The evil elf started to tie up Drew, laughing her annoying <laughs> evil elf laugh. Super Drew grabbed his penultimate and sketched a giant gift box around the bad elf. And he filled out the tag. To the North Pole County Jail, one bad elf from the stupendous, stupendous, and hot dog. Now let's find Santa. Giddy up. It didn't take long for them to spot him. Oh, thank goodness you found my reindeer. This definitely puts you on the nice list. Can I ride around with you and help you deliver presents? Please, 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 please. Sure you can. Ho, ho, ho. They flew from house to house delivering toys and goodies to all the boys and girls of the world. Whenever there was a house without a chimney, Drew would just draw one with his penultimate. Santa! Yeah. Oh, who are you? I'm the stupendous stupendous, and I helped save Christmas. Is it cool if we take some of these cookies, please? Uh, I guess so. Thanks again, Drew. You're a hero. No problem, Santa. High five. The next morning, kids everywhere woke up and found presents under their tree. The tags all said from Santa and the stupendous Drew Pendus. And hot dog. And the moral of the story, kids, stay away from bad elves. And Santa is definitely real. But he's not so great at flying a rocket ship. Whoa! Ho, 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 hello, kids. It's time for a brand new episode with the stupendous, stupendous, and his mighty pen ultimate. In today's episode, Drew's Christmas presents go missing, and he's got to find out who's been raining on his parade. Oh, dear. It was Christmas morning, and Drew raced out of bed to see what Santa brought him this year. It's totally going to be an Xbox this year, or a brand new supersonic race car, or the new Lego Star Wars set, or, or, or... <laughs> A bowling ball? A hockey puck? A great teddy bear? All these presents are totally boring and colorless. I think I know who's behind this. Grace Kale. Uh-oh, kids. It looks like there's a super villain in town for the holidays. It's time to bring out the Santa Tracker. Looks like Santa just made a delivery in Alaska. Drew sketched a reindeer whistle. You know, to rein in a reindeer. to get the sugar rush going. Drew kicked the sled into gear and jetted away over the mountains and through the woods. According to the tracker, Santa should be right about there, up ahead. But Santa wasn't flying solo, kids. The super evil color sucking happiness ruining gray scale was on Santa's tail, stealing all the colorful presents from the back of his sled. Whoa, is that a super horrific ultrasonic power suction person zapper? Uh, yeah. Well, that's super cool, but those presents don't belong to you. Give them here, Grace. Uh, they totally do now. Anyway, gotta go. No way I'm letting you ruin Christmas. Hey, Santa, how fast does this thing go? About 2,000 an hour on rocket mode. No one's used that setting since the great, great grandpa claws. Boy, he was a daredevil. Woohoo! Good, I'll steer. Hit it! Whoa! Drew and Santa bolted at the speed of light, higher, faster, higher, and faster, until... 
He landed on Mercury. That's Grace's home planet. Sorry, Santa. I gotta work on that landing. No problem, Drew. Ugh. Why do you always follow me, Drew? It's like super annoying. We're here to get all those awesome colorful presents back and save Christmas. Now give them back or else. Or else what? You can't stop me this time, Drew. Take one more step and I'll suction you just like the presents. I don't think so. Drew sketched a super stretcher to make his arms super <laughs> duper long. Wait, what are you doing? Don't go any closer or I'll... <laughs> Don't like this present as much as the other ones, do ya? Ho, ho, ho! This is like so lame. Let me go, Drew. Only once do you give me back those Christmas presents. Okay, okay, I'll give them back. Whatever, just let me out of here. Why do you need to steal all those presents anyway? Santa's not allowed up here because it's like dark and dreary and like not festive or something. And it would totally cramp his style. Oh yes, this place could use some snow and sunshine. You guys get like the best presents ever. You still can't go around stealing our presents or Christmas will be totally ruined. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine, I get it. Color those presents again for me this Christmas. Woo hoo. You know, Santa is here now. Maybe if you promise not to be naughty. Oh, oh, oh. No way! The Shopkin Chef Club Hotspot Kitchen with two extra recipe books? I mean, uh, yeah, that's cool. Merry Christmas, Grace. Try to be a little less naughty next year. And here you go, Drew. You did give me the Nerf and Strike Elite Hyperfire. I knew it! Thanks, Santa! Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Well, we better get going with the rest of these presents. There'll be a lot of people waiting for them. And I've got some baking to do. Uh, bye, Earth people. I think I'll steer this time. Ho, ho, ho! Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. All those awesome, colorful Christmas presents were back where they belong, and the evil Grace Scale had been defeated once more. This time. Moral of the story, boys and girls. Never settle for boring Christmas presents, and make sure you've brushed up on your present wrapping skills. Never know when it'll come in handy when you're fighting off those supervillains. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. Today's episode is going to be spectacular, or shall we say, craftacular. Twas the night before Crafty Carol's annual craftacular, when she showed off her greatest crafts of the year, and everyone did their best to add holiday cheer. Good work, gentlemen. So light on your feet. Yeah, I've been practicing my plays. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Just keep practicing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Uh, oops. Hey, wait, put me down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm okay, I'm okay. Didn't I tell you? The biggest event of the year. And that's why it's going to be so much fun to ruin it. <laughs> but why do we want to ruin such a nice party? Uh, Timmy, because we're villains. We ruin stuff. So get to work on stealing those Christmas carols like Dean Mean told you. Get me the Christmas carols. There will be no fa la 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 in cool school this year. <laughs> That's weird. It's like they keep burning. All right, so we've got to finish the ornaments on the top half. Uh, guys? I say we use the red for the top. Guys? And the green for the bottom. And then... Guys, we're going to need a new tree for all these ornaments. It's gone. Shh, come in. Double evil T-Ray mission accomplished. All clear for Operation Carol. Okay, all clear on my end. Shh, quiet. Oh, hello there. You don't look familiar, young man. Can I help you? Uh, I'm looking for carols. Well, what a coinkadink. I'm Carol. You were a Christmas Carol? Mm, I guess you could say that. Well, in that case, sorry, I'm gonna have to take you. Take me? Take me where? Let me out! I need the craft! Let me out! I got a Christmas Carol, just like I was supposed to. The carols are in there? Yeah, I got a big one. Now let's get out of here before we get caught. And off they went, through the portal back to Cruel School, with Crafty Carol in their bag. Uh-oh, kids. 
In the last episode, Evil Ray Blank and Tim and Timmy stole Crafty Cow right before the Craftacular. What will happen next? Dean Mean, I present to you a Cool School Christmas Carol. What is going on here? It's against the rules to steal teachers. That's not the great big book of Cool School Christmas Carols. A book? Well, of course, the book with every happy, jolly, merry carol from the beginning of time. I want that book, and I want it now. Okay, okay. Well, I know this isn't the carol we wanted, but we've never had a good crafter at cruel school. Maybe this isn't all bad after all. Hmm, he has a point. Miss Crafty, welcome to cruel school faculty. I don't get it. How does a tree just disappear? That's not all. Crafty Carol's gone missing. Uh-oh, this sounds like our friend from cruel school. Drew got into costume. Then he sketched a tree to place the missing one. Guys, look. Popsicle sticks on the floor. And those scissors. That looks like... A trail. Good catch, Ella. We gotta follow it, you guys. Crafty Carol, here we come. Drew and the gang followed the trail full of craft tools until they finally reached the Cruel School Portal. We're coming for you, Crafty Carol. With no time to spare, the gang hopped through the portal and emerged in a dark, empty hallway on the other side. Guys, over here. She's got to be in there. But how do we get inside? They'll see us. Hmm. But what if they don't see us? What's going on? I can't see. I can't see. Shh. Do not panic. Hell, I'm panicking. Ah! Oh, brother. Now let's find Crafty Carol and get out of here. Crafty Carol! Boy, are we glad to see you. Not as glad as I am to see you, kids. Oh, these socks smell terrible. Not to worry. We're here to get you back to Crafting at Cool School, where you belong. Let's get out of here before... Going somewhere? Merry Christmas, Drufus. Ho, ho, ho. Ah! Drew quickly whipped out his pen ultimate, sketched a super awesome candy cane shooter, and started hurling candy canes at Ray. Stop that! They hurt! That's what you get for trying to ruin Christmas. Uh, uh, I'll be back! Oh, thank you so much for coming to find me, kids. Cool school wouldn't be the same without you. Not to mention the craftacular. Crying craft buckets! The craftacular! Let's go! Everyone, back to the portal! Presenting the Cool School Craftacular! Yeah! Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. The Cool School Craftacular was a smashing success, and no one was trying to steal Crafty Carol or the Carols. Moral of the story, boys and girls, don't mix up Crafty Carols with Christmas Carols. It can get confusing. And be sure to do something special this year to make sure your holidays are the best ever. A special shout out to Rangus41 for suggesting I do more stories with Crafty Carol. And to everyone that suggested I draw a candy cane cannon. What great ideas! Be sure to comment what Drew should draw in his next adventure. And don't forget to subscribe! Happy holidays, 